Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be checking out AWS Kinesis, a family of services by AWS that allows you to collect, process and analyze real-time video and data streams. So as I just mentioned guys, Kinesis is really useful for processing and analyzing real-time streaming data. All right, this is the key point here. It was launched in November 2013 and offers developers the ability to build applications that can consume and process data from multiple sources at the same time. It also supports multiple use cases like real-time analytics, log and event data collection, and real-time processing of data generated by IoT devices like sensors, for example. As I just mentioned, it is a family of services, so we can find services like Kinesis Data Streams, which is pretty much the most famous one. We can also find Kinesis Data Firehose, Kinesis Data Analytics, and Kinesis Video Streams. So this is the whole family of services inside of Kinesis. Well, let's get straight into Kinesis Data Streams. It allows applications to process and analyze streaming data in real time. And this is a really important keyword that you guys need to remember. It is in real time, all right? Close to 200 milliseconds. Data Streams offers shards that ingest one megabyte per second or 1000 records per second and can emit data at two megabytes per second and partition keys as well that are used to group data within shards enabling order and consistency first step obviously input then you go into the shards and then you have a lot of options like data firehose spark or ec2 whatever you want and lastly the output all right so as i was mentioning it is data in real time so there's a lot of options that you can do with your stream so let's get to know how data is streamed. First of all, there's a source, devices or applications that produce real-time data at high velocity. Then we have the stream ingestion. Data from tens of thousands of data sources can be collected and ingested in real time. So for example, as we were seeing before, IoT devices. Stream storage, data is stored in the order it was received for a set duration of time and can be replayed indefinitely during that time. This is something that data firehose does not provide, all right? Just remember that you can replay the data. Then we have stream processing. Records are read in the order they're produced, allowing for real-time analytics or streaming ETL. And lastly, the destination, whether it's a data lake, data warehouse, or even a database. Here we have something that's very common. It's an enhanced fan out consumers. So here we have one data producer that goes into multiple shards and these shards have different consumers. So from the shard one, you can see that there is consumer application A, B, and C. So for example, one SNS notification to an email or a mobile phone, one to SQS for a queue for a database record, or even just saving the data in S3. You have different consumer applications that you can use for one shard. And now we get to Kinesis Data Firehose. So it is similar to data streams, but you have to be able to differentiate it from data streams, all right? So fully managed service for delivering streaming data to destinations like Amazon S3, Redshift, or Elasticsearch automatically scales to match data throughput. So it's not like the shards with Kinesis data streams. Includes the ability to transform and format data before delivering using Lambda functions. Supports compression, encryption, and format conversion to optimize the storage and processing. Near real time, right? It is not real time. And here we can see a comparison between both, all right? So first of all, streaming service for ingest at, at scale. Write custom code so you can do producer and consumers. Real time, 200 milliseconds, approx. Manage scaling, short splitting, or merging. So as I was mentioning, you have more ability to control the scaling. It doesn't scale on its own like data firehose. Data storage from one day to 365 days. Supports replay capability. And then we get into Kinesis Data Firehose, load streaming data into S3, Redshift, OpenSearch, third party, or custom HTTP. So it's more focused on loading this data into one of these services. Fully managed, near real time, automatic scaling, no data storage, and doesn't support replay capability. Now we get into Kinesis Data Analytics, process and analyze streaming data using standard SQL. You can generate time series analytics, calculate metrics over time windows, and then stream these values to S3, Redshift uh, through a Kinesis data delivery stream. Feed real-time dashboards. You can send aggregated and processed streaming data results downstream to feed real-time dashboards. Create real-time metrics. You can create custom metrics and triggers for use in real-time monitoring, notifications, and alarms. So this is the way of really diving deep into what's going on on the stream rather than just uh, creating the infrastructure or the pipeline for the real-time streaming data, all right? Now we get into Kinesis video streams. So fully managed 
AWS service to stream live video from devices to the AWS cloud or build applications for real-time video processing or batch-oriented video analytics. Capture massive amounts of live video data from millions of sources, including smartphones, security cameras, webcams, cameras embedded in cars, drones, and other sources. Build applications to access the data frame by frame in real-time for low latency processing. It automatically stores and encrypts this data at rest. All right, guys, so now that you know a little bit more on AWS Kinesis, we're going to be doing our hands-on. So first thing we want to do is to create a data stream inside of Kinesis. So just click on create a data stream and do a name. So we're going to be doing sensor data stream. And we are going to be changing the capacity mode to provision. So one shard is enough for our example. Just click on create data stream. And it's going to take a while. It's pretty fast. It, it, it definitely not going to take 10 minutes. All right, so it took around 10 seconds and our data stream has been created. The next step is to create the sensor data or to generate the fake sensor data. Uh, we're going to be simulating it from an EC2 instance. So you guessed it. We are going to be going over to EC2 and we are going to be launching an instance. All right, so click on launch instance right here and do a name again, sensor data instance. All right. For the application, Amazon Linux and the architecture is okay. The instance type is okay. For the key pair, I have created my own. It's a .pem. And for the network settings, we're going to leave everything as it is, but we are going to be creating a security group and we are going to be allowing SSH traffic from our own IP. So we have some degree of security inside our instance. Not that we're going to be saving anything important on the instance. It's just going to be generating some data, but it's better if we have this measure. So that's pretty much it. We're going to be launching the instance and it's going to take around one minute uh, for it to be fully functional. So as we can see right here, it's going to, it says that it's running, but the status check is initializing. So we're going to have to wait for this to be okay. Two out of two checks. And once we have those two checks, we can move on. All right. So now that the instance state is running and the status check is two out of two checks passed, we can connect to the instance via SSH. So let's copy the public IPv4 address and we're going to be connecting with this command in the command prompt or PowerShell SSH, I and then the location of your key pair. And lastly, EC2 user and the IPv4. So that's pretty much it. You just click on enter. Yes. And we are in the EC2 instance right now. All right. So we have successfully connected to it. First thing we're doing is creating a directory inside, which is going to be called sensor data. All right. Now we can see right here, sensor data. We're going to be going into this folder right here. And once we're inside, we are going to be creating our script with nano. All right. So we can do nano script dot pi. And right here, we're going to be pasting this really simple Python script. All right, so this is the script. It's a pretty simple script. It only, so, all right. All right, so this is the script. It's a pretty simple script. It just generates random sensor ID, temperature, humidity, and then stamps the time. And here we can see the function that sends the data to Kinesis. It's really simple, guys, just the, using the put uh, record method. And yeah, that's pretty much it. We're going to be saving this file. All right, looks like I messed up the script. I also pasted this part, which is the SSH command. So we're going to be removing it real fast. All right, so now it looks better. All right, so now that we have created our script, we are going to be doing this command AWS configure. All right, we're going to be needing our AWS access key ID, which you will be able to find in the I am panel. So I'm going to be going over. I'm not going to show it to you, obviously. All right, so we are installing pip3 so we can download Boda3 in our instance. So now we can do pip3 install Boda3. All right, so this is very useful because it is necessary for us to run everything AWS related in our instance. So once we have Boda3 as well, we are going to be trying to run the script and see if it works. Python3 script.py. It is working. We are successfully sending the data every single second to our Kinesis data stream. So this looks like it's working. Let's go ahead and go into Kinesis. 
so we can verify we are starting slowly to receive some data all right so keep in mind it's gonna take some time of course we just started sending data all right so i've waited for a bit i've changed the time window to be five minutes and we can see that we are starting to receive some data it is a really really small amount of data but we are starting to receive some so we are going to be checking out the actual data that we are receiving and for that we're going to be creating a consumer in our Kinesis data stream. So let's go into applications right here and let's create a consumer. So process data in real time. We're gonna be using the first option, Apache Flink Studio Notebook. Just click on create. And this is going to take a while to create. Uh, so the Studio Notebook name is going to be Sensor Data NB for notebook. And the database, we can use this one right here, all right? So yeah, let's go ahead and click create studio notebook. All right, successfully created studio notebook, sensor data and B. So just click on run right here. It's gonna take a while, like one to five minutes. All right, so studio notebook, sensor data and B has been successfully started. Now we can open in Apache Zeppelin. All right, so now that our notebook is live, I just opened it in Zeppelin and we're gonna be running this query right here. So this is a query where we're gonna be creating a table with for our AWS Glue database. And we simply have our variables right here, the sensor ID, the temperature, the humidity, and the timestamp. And we're gonna be doing the connector kinesis, the stream name, the region name, and we're gonna be starting with the latest position. I changed the script a little bit. I added more uh, sensors. Also, I changed the minimum uh, temperature to be 15 instead of 20. So that's what I changed only. And yeah, that's pretty much it. We're gonna be running it right here and we should be getting a table created. All right, so right here, this is the end result of all our work today. So we're gonna be able to see the sensor ID, the temperature, the humidity, and the timestamp. All right, so here we can see uh, 32, right? Now we have a lot more. So this is the feed the real-time feed of the data as it is being generated. And we have two different Flink jobs that are doing different things. But we are able to see the temperatures, the humidity, and the timestamp, all right? So that's pretty cool, and that's what we are here for, basically. Uh, this is a way of viewing the data in real time for a sensor. So this could be, for example, uh, the live position of Uber that you want to track, or you have a fleet of car sharing vehicles and you want to track the position in real time, you can do it with Kinesis data stream. Not the most popular AWS service, of course. Uh, you have much bigger and uh, demanded services like EC2, S3, Lambda, and I'm going to be going over every single one of those. Make sure to subscribe, guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.